How's it going today guys? Today we have an interesting video coming up for you guys. Fleur versus Psyonix cameras. They're two really great cameras, two really great products. They're night vision cameras and we're going to be talking about which is better and the differences between these cameras. That way you can make the best informed decision for what you're going to be putting on your vessel. So with that being said, let's get started. As I get started in this video, I just want to make sure I remind you guys to smash the like button on this video. That way it gets out to more people. And be sure to subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss a future video. And with that being said, let's get started. So one thing I do want to point out that is similar across all night vision cameras across the board. They're very advanced, the technology in them. And you know, because it's so advanced, I'm sure you guys have heard this a lot of times they're gonna have issues a little bit more often than other electronics on your boat and um, that's not to say that you're gonna have issues most people don't have any issues at all but the issues you might have might be stupid little things that you might need the manufacturers assistance for so be sure you're buying it from a dealer that way you can make sure you're getting a warranty on those products um, they both have great warranties on them and from an authorized dealer will give you that warranty as well also if there is an ongoing rebate at the time buying from an authorized dealer will get you that rebate as well I have a great reputable one link down below in the description for you guys so be sure and check them out. So what's the difference between these two cameras is first let's talk about the overall specs. So we're going to be really talking about the difference between like the entry level Fleur which is about $3,500 as opposed to the Psyonix which is about $1,700-$1,800. Um, their only model really. They both did a lot of military before coming into the uh, maritime environment however Psyonix is newer to this industry than Fleur's. Fleur's been around for a little while. Um, they run. They have a thermal camera on like Sonics which has an ultra low um, ultra low light camera. So a little bit difference in the technology but let's just first talk about it um, comparing like the two basic cameras. So as far as like the range or like how far you can be able to see it's about the same on both of these cameras um, but one of the major differences right up front is the price difference where you're paying $1800 for a Psyonix, you're paying about $3,500 for a Fleur. Um, so it's almost twice the price for a Fleur, but you're getting a little bit um, different technology in the Fleur. You're getting a thermal versus an ultra low light camera. Um, that's also something to consider when looking to purchase one of these two cameras. So another thing is to note between these two cameras is that Psyonix does not have paint and tilt on their cameras. Um, it's just strictly like a fixed mounted camera. Fleur had this on their MD series. Um, you know, those aren't as popular anymore because a lot of people that resort to the painted tilt, that way they can move the camera around on their boat, and oftentimes they will buy a remote with it, so that way if their fingers are wet or something like that, they can still move around their camera, um, or if the, it's rough or something like that and you don't really want to be touching your screen, you can use the remote and uh, paint and tilt your camera. Um, whereas the socks, you can move it, but it would have to be done manually. Um, it's fixed mounted primarily for most guys, not like moving the camera while the boot is running or anything like that. So it's fixed mounted. However, the width of your field of view on the Sonyx accounts for a little bit of that um, pan and tilt feature that they lack on. It's a wider camera, like a wider field of view. Um, so whereas like, let's say like the floor you might be able to see this much, the Sonyx you'll be able to see this much wide um, on your screen because it's wider. But you can't pan and tilt so you can't turn it to the back of the boat unless you physically manually turn it around. Um, back to what I was saying about the floor on the paint and tilt, as far as getting a remote, I highly recommend you get a remote because if it's rough or your fingers are wet, it's going to make it much easier to control the camera. You can have it mounted to your dash and one of the favorite things that I do and I've seen other guys doing is you have it, the your wires connected to the back of the remote that you would need and you know you have a little bit of excess and that way you know, if you're sitting down in the captain's chair steering or, you know, you have your first mate next to you that's looking on the screen trying to see if there's an object in the way or whatever, um, they can take it out and sit down rather than having to be, like, standing and putting their hands on the dash and possibly pressing some other button. Um, so having a little bit of excess camera gives you a little bit of mobility with the uh, remote, and that's just something I thought I might share with you guys that you guys might find helpful. 
Um, so back to what we were saying, pain and tilt floor, you can turn it all the way up, look at the sky, turn it all the way down, look at the deck of your boat. You can turn it from facing the front of your boat all the way to the back of your boat. And then you can go the other way, it's 360, um, pretty self-explanatory. You've got a whole 360 field of view potential um, with the floor camera, whereas Psyonix is fixed, but it's a wider field. So another difference between the two is the technology they employ. So Psyonix employs a ultra low light uh, night vision technology. So what that's relying on is that's going to rely on other lights in the marine environment to give you that colored picture um, and be able to see in the dark. Whether that be the moonlight, coastal lights, or whatever the other light source might be, it's relying on other lights to develop a picture for you to see on your screen with the colors. Whereas the FLIR is a thermal camera, it's picking up heat signatures and that's, you're getting a thermal image on your screen with the, third, with the FLIR camera. Um, so that's one of the differences between the two is that the technology in FLIR is thermal whereas Sanox is ultra low light. Um, there's a few advantages and benefits to both of these. So for example is the color scheme. Sanox has a way better color scheme because it almost looks like daylight, like if you were sitting like in normal daytime on the cameras with the color, um, it's not going to be as like high quality as like your physical vision or like it, it, it's something like HD, like your phone camera. Um, it's going to be a little bit grainy and hazy, but um, it's still a really great, great image and you're going to be able to differentiate objects and stuff like that and see things at night, but you're going to need some of that other light source to give you that image on your camera. Whereas the floor is picking up a heat signature, doesn't matter what lights are around or whatnot. Um, the color palette or scheme is very basic on the floor cameras, you know, your traditional thermal imaging uh, color scheme is what you're going to get on the floor. I personally like the gray and white color scheme the best. Um, I find it's the easiest to differentiate objects, but however that's my personal preference and uh, that's my favorite color scheme on the floor. Another thing to make note of on the Psyonix is bright lights, like if you're running up at night and there's a boat that has their spotlight on, that's going to like distort, I mean not distort, but it's going to be like a blur and like you know affect the image on your Psyonix camera um, at night because bright lights don't really go well with ultra low light cameras. Um, like if there's like really bright lights like you know like from like a stadium or something or you know like a really 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 bright like city lights. Um, most of the time city lights aren't really an issue but like super super bright lights I'll have a picture here for you guys to see. Um, but as you can see like the bright lights like you can't really see much of that image on there because it like blurs it out so like if there's a spotlight on the boat that's shining directly at you and your camera um, it's gonna have like a little blur so that's gonna affect your image on the science camera so that's one downfall is that it relies on light so example running out on a full moon pitch black or doesn't have to be like running out offshore like you could be running in like some river system or you know into a bay or something or wherever wherever it's pitch black there's no light source you're not going to be able to see anything on your science camera, unfortunately. Whereas your third, your floor camera, no light, or little light, full moon, new moon, same image, all day, any day, um, on the floor camera. They both have daylight modes, um, where you can use them in the daylight, and they both are usable at night. However, the floor is usable at any condition, and the floor does not have the same issue as the Sonox with the bright lights. So if there's a boat that's running up to you with a spotlight on, that's not going to affect your image of the boat and you're going to see a crisp picture with the throw camera and that thermal view. Um, something else I want to talk about is like seeing objects in the water. So in terms of like search and rescue and stuff like that, they tend to lean more towards or largely more towards the thermal camera because it's picking up people's heat signatures. So like if there's a person on top of the water, you know, you'll see what they look like as if they were swimming in the daytime. However, at night, you know, that's how you're going to see them on the Sonics camera. But if there's no light at all, um, you're not going to be able to see that person. And that's why they prefer a thermal camera because, you know, they don't really get to choose when incidents happen. And, you know, they got to be ready any situation, anywhere, anytime. So that's why they go with a FLIR. Um, it is more expensive though, but keep that in mind. Um, if you're running at night, that FLIR camera is picking up that person's heat signature. So you're going to be able to see like that whole person's body in the water. Um, you're going to be able to differentiate and like tell they're swimming or not. 
And another thing is too, as far as picking up crab traps on both of these, it's really great. That's a big issue for a lot of people, whether it be it's fishing nets or lobster buoys or whatever. You can do it really well on both of these. Something I also wanted to point out about the floor that I've noticed, um, because it picks up heat signatures, this, I thought this was kind of cool. It's not a deciding factor, but just to show you how like the thermal imaging has a difference. So sometimes I run it at night, and I see there's these big fish called a tarpon. And uh, sometimes they'll be like gulping on the surface, gulping air, or they'll be swimming right below the surface. And um, on my thermal imaging, I can see that whole fish. It's pretty cool, um, like because it's picking up the heat signature of the fish. So you can like see that fish swimming right below the surface on your FLIR camera, that thermal camera that you might be using. Whereas the Sonics, you know, if it's coming up, you'll see like the like the ripple, or like if it jumps out of the water, you'll see it briefly jumped out of the water. But if it's swimming like below the surface, you won't be able to see it because it's not a thermal camera. So that's something just to show you like of how different like these two cameras can be uh, and how their technologies are different. So with that being said, I personally prefer the floor, the flirmer, the floor, the floor more, and I like it better because you know you can see in any condition, um, no matter if it's pitch black or if it's a full moon or whatever, you can see in any condition. It is more expensive but you're getting a few extra features with it or extra usability because you're not having to judge when you're using it. Um, for my purposes of running offshore, fishing at night, you know, I'm going way out, it's much better for me to have the floor than it is the Cyonix. Now, if you're just gonna do some coastal cruising, you know, you wanna have the more economical option and it's, you're gonna be in areas where there's always lights and, or whatever and you wanna get that floor, I mean, that Cyonix camera and get that really nice clean picture, you know, that might be a better option for you. Now something else I did want to circle back to that we talked to earlier in this video was about the pan and tilt. So if you're running out at night or you're running through a channel or something and you want to check your side or behind you, you're not going to be able to do that with the Sonos camera because you have to either physically move it or you're just going to stay fixed mounted. Whereas the FLIR, um, the FLIR like if you wanted to check and like see what was on your port side, your starboard side or directly behind your boat, pan and tilt. Um, you can tilt up or down the camera to see to adjust your field of view and turn the camera to see um, you know like what was like what's coming up on your starboard or port side or directly behind you instead of like having to take out a spotlight and look like oh is that a boat or something like that you can just turn the camera and say oh that's a boat coming towards me or it's going away from me it's no issue at all so that's something I wanted to point out to you guys as well so with that being said thanks for watching this video guys I hope it was helpful be sure to subscribe hit the like button on this video and don't forget to hit the notification bell that way you don't miss a future video and be sure and check out the links down below in the description i have from an authorized dealer with that being said thanks for watching guys and until next time